guys, how's it going? I'm making a fall wreath for one of my doors today and I thought it would be really fun to show you the process because I'm gonna be using mostly stuff from my own garden that I've gathered up that dry really nice. So I thought you guys might like to see what those things are. I have ordered a couple of things from the florist that I can't grow in my zone, uh, but I'm going to be building it on this grapevine wreath form, which I really like using these because they're pretty to start out with. So I don't have to worry so much about covering every like square inch of the form. So let me start off with showing you some of the things that I'm gonna be using today. Starting with the tools, I've got some paddle wire here, which I typically use a lot of that. I've got my Felco pruners, a pair of snips, um, just in case I need to do anything more fine. And then I've got a hot glue gun, which I use quite a bit of hot glue when I'm making wreaths like this. And then for the pretty stuff, I've got some dried limelight hydrangea blooms, which we just did a video on how to dry hydrangeas. So we'll link it down below if you haven't seen that one. And then I've got some echinacea seed heads, which this is what's left after the petals dry up and fall off. And these are really neat. These are seed heads off of my standby me clematis. And this is a sedum flower head. And these are really wonderful to use. They darken as they dry. Some gorgeous rose hips, which I purposely leave some of my roses and I don't deadhead them so that they'll form these beautiful hips. A bunch of pine cones that I picked up from underneath our spruce tree. And these are actually dried gourds that I found in my parents' orchard. Uh, they're all dried up and hollowed out and I may end up putting a little bit of gold spray paint on them. This is a branch off of our Scarlet Curls willow tree that we have out in our formal garden. And these are a few things that you can order from your florist. So these are preserved oak leaves. I love the way they look, they're real. They've been preserved in a way that makes them soft and it makes them retain their color. We've got a magnolia leaf here. I actually order these in bundles. We cannot grow this variety of magnolia here in zone five. We've got salal, which is just a really inexpensive filler that florists use in bouquets all the time, but it does dry nicely. And then we've got dollar eucalyptus, which I thought might be nice to bring a little spot of kind of a blue tint. And then the last couple of things, they're not real, uh, but I thought they might be kind of fun to work into the wreath. I've got some uh, faux pheasant feathers, and then this really cute little owl made out of all natural elements. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna use these, but I might. All right, so now that that's out of the way, I'm gonna start this wreath. And I think what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to twist some of these Scarlet Curls branches around. And I realize that I'm adding branches on top of branches, but I wanna give this a little bit more movement. So what I'm gonna do is I've gathered up these branches, um, the kind of wider ends on this side, and I'm going to lash them all together with paddle wire. Now I'm just gonna wrap it around just several times to where it's really tight. So now I've got another piece of paddle wire that I'm gonna to attach to my bundle so that I can easily attach it to the wreath form. And then because these branches are so squirrely, I'm actually going to add one more piece of wire. See how the ends right here kind of come out? I'm going to attach another piece of wire so that it's really secure down here so that when I'm kind of manhandling these branches and weaving them in and out, it won't move at the end. Working with wire reminds me why putting on lotion is a bad idea. <laughs> I'm having a really hard time getting a good grip. Wire slipping right out of my hands. So these branches are going nowhere. So now I'm just gonna take them and start weaving them in and out around the wreath. I may need to add a piece of wire here or there to get them to sit exactly how I want them to. So I think that's a really good start. I'm gonna add a few more branches kind of in the same manner because I wanna make this a little bit wider. It's going on kind of a large door. This is an 18 inch wreath form. I don't know if I said that before, but I want it to end up being about this wide without taking up too much of the center. So I'm gonna add a few more branches. Okay, so I think at this point, I've got my branches kind of woven around. I might add more as I go, but I've got this side a little bit wider, so I'm gonna kind of start building right here, and then we'll see how far I get up here. I may not end up putting very much stuff on the kind of top part of the wreath, so I think I'm gonna start with some of my bulkier stuff first, so some of the leaves and foliage. So I'm gonna start with the magnolia leaves first, and this is the part where I will use some hot glue because it makes it easy just to kind of tuck them exactly where I want them to be. And I am going to use these with the brown side, so the underside of the leaf facing out because that's what I prefer for fall. Um, I do love the glossy green, that's very pretty, and I might turn some of them forward so that I kind of have like a, I'll show you what that looks like. It's really pretty to use them like that, as opposed to just all green, it would be just a little bit boring.
so this wreath has already started to take on a life of its own, which they all start to do that. Uh, and it looks like this is gonna be the center, kind of where this little cluster of pine cones is. And it looks like I'm gonna be building this way and this way, whether or not I meet on this side, we'll see as it evolves. But I've already used some of the rose hips, which I think really just shine in this arrangement. There's a limelight hydrangea, um, some of the bush clematis, and I think actually these pheasant feathers look really great with the rose hips. And then as kind of the backdrop, I've been using these magnolia leaves which really um, help contrast. It gives weight to the back of the wreath. So not everything is really like branchy or ferny looking, but there's some weight and boldness to it. So it looks like I might be using hot glue for the rest of this wreath. So I'm just gonna keep going for it. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited with how this is coming out so far. So fun. And the cool thing about doing wreaths like this is that you will end up with something that you could never buy at a store. They are not manufactured. They don't all look the same. It'll look just completely different and completely unique. Okay, so from where I stand, it looks pretty full, but it's always helpful to pick your wreath up or even hang it on your door wherever you're gonna display it and take a look and see if there are any holes. So I'm just gonna do that really quick and see if I need to amp up any section and I can kind of see that I maybe do need to amp it up. Little preview right here. Um, I think I need to add a little bit more weight right in that section on both sides, kind of where it tapers down. I need a little bit more fluff. All right guys, so the wreath is all done and I think I wanna put it on this door since I've already decorated for fall back here. It just seems like the most appropriate place. So I'm just using a wreath hook that goes over the door and it slides on really easily like that it's perfect and i love how it turned out so i ended up not putting a whole bunch of stuff over here just a lot of branches so i added like twisted a bunch of those curly willow branches and just kind of wove them in and out of the um grapevine wreath which was perfect because i didn't have to use a ton of glue on this side i added a little bit of color right here just so that there was a little bit i don't know it looked a little bit too empty so just that little pop of color I think just helps. So I did end up using quite a bit of the stuff that I gathered and I do have a lot more left so I can continue making some more wreaths for the rest of our house. It's just so fun when you can go out into your own garden, gather stuff, use it in your own decorations. It makes you feel like, it's kind of like growing a vegetable garden. Going out and picking your own stuff and you've got it for free, it's organic. Um, same goes for this kind of thing. You can have your own beautiful blooms and you feel like a sense of accomplishment for having grown them yourself, drying them, using them in something like this. And then this, since it's a dried arrangement, this will last for like indefinitely as long as you store it well. So usually I leave it on the wreath hanger and put a big garbage sack over it and gather it at the top and just hang it in a spare closet. Or if you've got like space in a garage or somewhere where it's not gonna get smashed or touched a lot, they will last for quite a long time. So that's pretty much it for this wreath making project. And you know, you should check your local garden center because a lot of times they'll offer wreath making classes, particularly in the fall and winter months. And most of the time they have all the supplies that you need there, which is a really good way to get started, especially if you've never done this before. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.